I can't possibly read after that. That was amazing. That was the best intro I've ever had and the only intro that ever included the word masturbation. <laughs> Or celery. Or celery. That's true. That's very true. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Thank you, Virginia. Thank you, uh, Lila Litt. Um, I'm reading from uh, my novel, which is um, uh, unpublished, and um, I have a cold, and I'm just going to um, uh, apologize now because I'm not allowed to apologize in the middle. <laughs> this is the thing that comes after the thing that came before. My mantra these days, this is the thing that comes after the thing that came before. Because yes, I may be feeling a little freaked out right now. My hands may be shaking, my mouth dry. The spotlight might be blinding me so I can't see where I am on stage. My heart might be beating so much stupid up to my brain that I'll surely forget every move, every cue, every breath I'm supposed to take, but nothing that happens on this stage tonight can be anywhere near as bad as the thing that came before. <laughs> Man, these spotlights. Back in rehearsal in the studio, no one bothered to say, hey, once you get on stage and are doing this in front of an audience, that spotlight's going to be whacking you in the face the whole time. Light this thick, you can feel it. I don't mean heat, I mean touch all along the rims of your pupils and spreading out across your face, a big sweaty palm of light. It's got hold of your head. It's trying to pull you off stage. It's interrogating with the question, why did you ever think you could be in the opera? It's hypnotizing you with the suggestion that it might be time to york all over your opera shoes. <laughs> They're red pumps, actually. There's no such thing as opera shoes, not like ballet slippers or anything. I hold my pose, spine straight, chin up, Eyes out into the bright blank beyond the stage, hand on my hip, my sexy pose. That's what the director Ted said to us women, pose sexy. He said, move around, do what comes natural. He said, have fun with it. He said, use whatever va va boom you got in your bag of tricks. My hand on my hip, that's pretty much my whole bag of tricks. <laughs> and right now with the sweaty palm of light slapped over my face, I could hardly move. It's that hypnosis thing that happens when your senses are overloaded. That, and I might be have I might have a teensy bit of stage fright. You wouldn't think anything as trivial as stage fright could freak me out after the thing that came before, but I don't know anything about acting. I don't really like people looking at me, and I can't possibly pull off this frilly, sexy mama opera dress, the bones of which are jabbing me in the ribs. And this wig is so heavy, it's pushing my neck down into my chest, so my idiot heart is whamming right up against my throat. Okay, yes, this is only dress rehearsal. What of it? <laughs> There's still an audience. Every person in the production gets two free tickets, so the house is full of friends and loved ones. A fellow cast member gave me her passes, so I have not two but three loved ones out there scrutinizing me from the seats. And you know what else? They give out invitations to high schools all over Portland. Teenagers who've never seen the opera before come out in jackets and ties and prom dresses. So excited about their first taste of high culture. Maybe I can conveniently faint and fall into the orchestra pit and break my neck on a cello and die. <laughs> I think I'm supposed to move or something. I don't remember how to use my muscles. Someone behind me puts a hand on my shoulder and pulls me back from the light, turning me toward him. I swear I can hear the rending of the air as I'm sucked free. The chorister is wearing a vest and a black beret. Putty, smooth, stage makeup skin, eyeliner thick around his lashes. He stops singing long enough to whisper in a deep hiss that can only come from the belly of an opera singer. Come on, you're supposed to be flirting. Love I've ever known how to do that. Calm down. Repeat after me. This is the thing that comes after the thing that came before. You got through that, you get through this. Piece of cake. I take my hand off my hip and put it on the chorister's shoulder. I try to think of how to be sexy. I swivel my butt around until the chorister's eyebrows press a wrinkle in his forehead, which means that's not helping. <laughs> and then I take my hand off his shoulder and put it back on my hip. In the scene in the opera, I'm a townswoman hanging out in the square, flirting with the singing soldiers. My soldier sings over my shoulder toward the audience, a blast of baritone and toothpaste breath in my face but the music. <laughs>
Did I say the light could touch? That's nothing compared to the music. You try posing with an orchestra at your feet and a chorus all around and a five foot tall opera singer belting Carmen just behind your left ear and see if you don't discover new ways of being touched. You, I don't have to sing. Oh dear God, no, you would not want me up here singing. I'm what they call a super, which sounds great, but really that just means I'm an extra. Supernumerary is the complete word. Spear carriers, carrier, spear carriers is what they sometimes call us. In the opera, you've got your principal vocalist, your secondary vocalist, you've got your chorus, and lastly, you've got your supers, who mostly pay people in the, in the crowd, warriors, soldiers, townsfolk, prostitutes. I get to play a prostitute in that, too. <laughs> that is, that they don't kick me out for going catatonic during dress rehearsal. We don't get paid, but we do get two free dress rehearsal tickets and a chance to see and hear the opera from the inside out, which is strange and gorgeous and worth buckets of money in my book once you get past the terror thing. You probably think a super, an extra, who cares about stage fright? What am I doing it so hard? But what we do is mostly unscripted, and I'm way better off doing things when I know what those things are at all times. I gave one of my dress re rehearsal tickets to my mom. I was so glad she could make it. Okay, I lied. I'm horrified. <laughs> Not so much that she'll see me up here sucking as a super, but that she'll talk th through the whole thing, make comments about that's my daughter up there, the anonymous people sitting next to her, that she'll crinkle wrappers and eat potato chips out of her purse while Carmen is singing the bird song, that she'll find out I lied to her. It wasn't a big lie, but lies adhere to a particular kind of mathematics, the exponential kind. See, I lied to Elizabeth too. A different lie, but one that will compound with a lie I lied to mom and make most lies way worse. Okay, I lied. The lie I told mom was a big lie, really, really big. It was about the thing that came before. Elizabeth is out there somewhere in the seats to dress rehearsal tickets or general admission, so they're probably not sitting together, but they might see each other across the audience. They could happen to meet during the first intermission, second intermission. A glass of wine and, oh, Elizabeth, you look so healthy. I thought my daughter told me you were at death's door. So, okay, I lied to mom about that too. So, okay, I lied to mom about a bunch of things, but sometimes you have to lie to keep the peace, to keep sanity. Elizabeth is out there and mom is out there and dear God in heaven, Danny is out there and the lie I told Danny, if it comes in contact with a lie I told Elizabeth or the lie I told mom, man, it's hot up here. <laughs> there goes a proverbial bead of sweat, a straight shot from the back of my neck down my spine under my frilly, sexy mama opera dress. And my singing soldier just spat on me for the second time. <laughs> I make a curtsy and step away. I wind my way through the silk of mingling voices. Just moving puts a little lift of freedom back into the banging of my stage fright heart, steps me a little bit away from the lies beyond the spotlight. But when I turn, the soldier who stops me, who clamps his hand down on my shoulder, is fuller. The smile I give him, that's a lie too. All right, so I haven't been quite upfront with any of them, but I've had good reasons, lots of good reasons, and I never lie in a way that will hurt anyone. Trust me. Fuller is singing, but he's not looking over my head into the audience. He's looking right at me. Fuller, the one to whom I told the worst line of all. In this spotlight, the pupils of his dark, deep-set eyes are shrunk to decimal points. The sound of Fuller's voice is deep molasses drenching down to my toes. He presses his thumb into the flesh under my collarbone, presses hard, and the jolt of pain that runs down meets the jolt of remorse that runs up my body in answer to it. Remorse may seem like a strange response to the touch of a, of a brute like Fuller, but this is as it should be. This is the thing that comes after the thing that came before. Mom in the seats, Elizabeth and Danny in the seats, and me on stage in the moment where the two opposing jolts meet in the middle of me in the place I'm afraid to touch because what hides there is the truth. The thing that came before, I'm ready, and I'm not ready to talk about that yet. Thank you. Oh.